Hello and welcome back to the European HS Pro League. My name is Sims and we have just seen match number one of week number five, day number one, get underway. Vibe taking down Pulse Gaming in a very close 3-1 series. Unfortunately, Pulse just not managing to pull it out right at the end when it mattered most. Joining me on the desk as ever, I have my two wonderful compadres, Mr. Daniel Gasking and Mr. Harry Chanon. Gentlemen, how are you both feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm I'm so excited for this next game. Yeah. We, we wanted to see it live on stream last time. We had the reverse sweep. We all watched the VODs. It was an incredible series, and now we get to witness the rematch. Yeah, it's... What more can you want? The yeah. X, the X squads going up against each other. It's, it's amazing. This yeah. is exactly the kind of matchup that we wanted here on our... I don't, I don't, it's... There's no real name for it as such. You usually have championships set Sunday or... It's the Epsilon Derby. The Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. I like that. The Epsilon Derby. Thank Everybody, you. please, please, please tweet the stream. This is the matchup that we've been waiting to see. Various teammates going at each other's necks. The old Epsilon roster breaking up. These two massive giants now colliding. And then, of course, you throw Ramirez in there, who's been with the Bucks during Pro League at the start. This is going to be a hell of a matchup. Obviously, last time these two teams faced off, we saw Dinosaurs reverse sweep X-Men. Now we've got a new team. We've got the captain in there, Ramirez. But I want to put this out there really quickly. So Dinosaurs won. Bad thing negative at the moment. They're on a four-loss streak. Yeah. They're not having the best of time. However, when they beat X-Men, I think it's fair to say, fair enough, we mentioned, you know, Ramirez is a damn good pickup. But when Foxy was on that, a lot more slaying power and a lot more general power overall. You've got a captain now in the form of Ramirez. You've got a really strong leader. Don't know what's going to come out here. The strong leader factor in this more of this teamwork or the fact that I actually think just a little bit, maybe if we get the old dinosaurs when they uh, reverse sweeped in last time, we see Cristilla going off. I think the firepower is in the back, back pocket of dinosaurs. The last time dinosaurs won was against X-Men in that reverse sweep. They haven't won a game since. They so cursed them. They've been cursed. Is the Epsi curse uh, returning? Just like the travel curse that they had. But important thing for X Men if X Men win this game, they 100% secure their spot at playoff finals. So a big one for them. That is pretty huge. But like, like you said, Sims, they're on a four loss streak right now, mm. if I'm not mistaken. They were they were three and three and one in the league, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They were looking really, really good. They, yeah, they, they, we were, I was like, hey, you know what? This Dinosaurs team is definitely going to be second place. And now they're fourth. So, but you did call them to beat them. I've I got to did. say, every, t every time they've won, you've called the win. I did. <laughs> Little smile on there. But you know what? One thing we always do each and every week, guys, we've been doing the new community section. That's all rubbish shoulders. The rubbish, the, ru the, the I just lucky want some rubber of the, the Gaskin. Gaskin energy. The Gaskin. Every time I, I seem to touch this man, we have a great series. I Here feel like I should be ringing my solicitors soon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring up the community section now, guys. Give all the people and all the amazing stuff that we see coming out of the Halo community time and time again. You can see on there now this one, esl.gg forward slash Halo Heat Maps. If you've not seen it, I tweeted it out last week. This thing is incredible. It goes back to the old Halo 3 style. You can see where it breaks it down into four sections of every single map. There's a little bar at the top. I struggled at first. I'm not going to lie. It's not the easiest thing to use when you want to change maps. You have to click the map at the top. You then get a drop down list. When you click them, it shows you, you get basically three heat maps. One's for the light at the line of sights which is brilliant you can see all where people kind of mainly sit you then get a heat map for where kills come from and get a heat map to where deaths arrive pretty much so you can kind of place them above each other and then correlate where things are going on and then you've got the kd ratios at the end i remember you sent it to me on skype just with like omg and i spent about an hour just looking it's like really it. good it's isn't just it? you can't stay off of it it's crazy it's, it's so it goes so in depth it's if anyone fantastic. remembers the old halo 3 heat maps you used to go on snowbound right where the shotgun spawns <laughs> massive just red a area. big it's red just area a huge just red flame it's just there that's the one thing you see on fathom that you go on a map like fathom and then top me is just a <laughs> it's just it, it's it's lit i think is your it's your lit. term it's you like so to use lit. it's hugely I, I love lit. that new emote by the way Thank i'm just you. gonna say that so yeah that's halo heat maps check them out they are truly truly incredible next up we have my man i spiteful he's a halo youtuber he does a lot I mean, uh, he really does a lot of Warzone zones. The, the, the things that he's kind of coming up, he has this dual series where I've he'll pick the, the, so the two good. weapons. Yep. It's so damn good. He'll pick two weapons and he'll go into Warzone and use these only two. And the kills that he racks up with them. And 
they're incredible. Yeah, it really is cool because not only do you get to see some awesome kills and some, you know, some interesting warzone combos, but if you're like me, who who's a bit of a scrub and hasn't opened enough <laughs> gold packs to get all the legendary weapons and stuff, you get to see them in action. You get to see how they play and stuff. So it's a it's a really cool, unique YouTube series. It's I'd, definitely, definitely. I'd worth never see. I'd never had any legendaries before, and it was like, oh, Sims. Here's a legendary. Oh, Sims. Here's another. Le oh, you're dead again. Here's another legendary. He just bangs them out left, right, and centre. Really, really good, fun series. Go and check him I out. Incredible stuff. Doing a lot of new things with the new Warzone expansion. I don't think there's enough rec levels in the world to drop you enough legendary weapons, though. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. We're going to move on from that yeah, because he's now on. getting extremely offensive. Moving across to my man, Vito. This guy has just recently got his sub button. One of the. Uh, if you've seen the skill gap as well, the skill gap emotes. If you haven't seen him, seriously, check them out. He's doing a lot of YouTube stuff as well. He is grinding hard. This man is awesome. Definitely semi-professional level without question. I've seen him playing. We saw back at the NA Regional Finals. Awesome, awesome player. Brilliant YouTuber. Brilliant streamer. Overall, fantastic personality. Pretty much what Halo Esports is all about. Drop by. Here's your there, Vito. Dash YT. Check out his YouTube. His link to his Twitch is on there. Also, again, he has just recently got his sub button. Dragging in 100, 200 viewers every single night. Awesome, awesome stuff. I heard that Wonderboy Halo guy is quite good on Twitch as well. What? No, oh, was that? Was Wonderboy Halo on Twitch? Yeah, no, he's great. He's, yeah, he's really good. I like his new sub emotes. He is a massive, massive sellout. Anyway. Beyond skins, we can see, as yesterday, we had all the skins coming out, the new packs were released, and they are fantastic. That CLG Magnum, bro, oh, holy yeah. hell. And it's great now running around seeing people with all these different emblems, all these different weapon skins. Beyond recently updated their article. Now, they did really, really in-depth. They took photos, they took images, they did breakdowns, they've updated it with all different things. Jump across, esl.gg forward slash beyond dash skins. If you want a lot more information, all the information, of course, comes out of the official hitch. Yes, and ESL Halo Twitters all over the websites. But if you want a little bit more of a breakdown, check out the article that those guys wrote up. It is super, super in depth. And speaking of articles, we now bring up our final one. It's our friends over at Reddit Halo, our Halo, as we like to call it, advanced. Not advanced moments, actually adva advanced movements. You can see on the bottom down there, esl.gg forward slash Reddit Halo dash am. It's kind of like, it's getting to a feed now where people are doing all the different trick jumps, the bump jumps, the slide jumps, any different kind of, you know, that you can bring in. I mean, all the that, bumps. that article was just pretty much wrote about Frosty's entire gameplay, to be honest with you. I was going to say, I mean, what we saw, was it last week we saw in the NA Pro League? Uh, with, the, with the wall? Yeah. That's that's crazy. Like the fact that Renegades was it Renegades they were playing against? I can't remember. I think who it, was it was Optic. It may have been, yeah, it may have been Optic. They had absolutely no idea that he was up there because they just didn't know. It was like, oh, we're getting shot from the sky. He must be like hacking. He just perfected him, didn't he? Straight behind the table. Is he in forge mode, like flying around? Like what's going on here? Uh, do you want to know something more interesting about that? No. Do you want to know? No, I mean, yeah, go on. Did he just really do that to me? No, I want to know, Richard. Do you? Do you know who discovered that jump? You, me, no, no, you, you, no. It was the Sudders. <laughs> uh, it was actually the Sudders. Who did, who, who, I remember them now. A while back, at first I was like, yeah, and then and they kind of brought it back. They did put it on on Beyond a while back, and things like that is kind of what we're seeing more and more as we advance through Halo Esports. And honestly, if anyone's going to pull something like that off, it had to be Frosty. It really, really did. Yep. So I've been told we are just about to get underway with our next game. Let's bring up the series X-Men versus Dinosaurs. This is the battle we have all been waiting to see live on your TVs. Plaza Strongholds game number one. Colosseum Slayer game number two. Colosseum Capture the Flag game number three. And it's a little bit worrying because it was actually Colosseum where they began to turn this around in that reversal sweep. Eden Strongholds for game number four. And the Rig Slayer will be your game number five. And the Vitos were relatively interesting. Plaza Slayer, they both not really vetoed it much. Colly Slayer, sorry, Colosseum Slayer. Dinos have never vetoed that map, so clearly very confident. But Colosseum CTEF will capture the flag. X-Men have never vetoed that one. Well, Plaza Stronghold's probably the most played game type in the Pro League at the moment. And that's our game number one. X-Men hold a 2-2 two two record on this map. So they have two wins, two losses. Dinosaurs 
one win, two losses. So if you're a betting man, the record suggests that X-Men should come out on top on this one. This is going to be a Royal Rumble, ladies and gentlemen. These two teams find it off. The reversal sweep was done last time they matched up. Let's see what happens as we get gear number one underway. Remember, tweet the stream. Use the hashtag HCS on board with the dinosaur himself. Buck 57 grenades go in. Nobody grabbing that camo yet. Snipe drone goes down. We're going to see Ramirez fall as well. Chalky's left in the yard on his own. So certainly we got the camo kicking things off with dinosaurs, but also they're going to grab themselves the lead once they capture bottom mid. Oh, I am glad that players aren't rushing for that camo straight away like you would if the overshield was up there. Just being patient, waiting, see if you can get a couple of kills uh, because you, you don't just want to push and grab it because you will get taken down because you will still be visible as Buck20 will try and take down Chalky, but Chalky is going to survive, but he is getting railed from Yellow Pipes. Jimbo getting a really important kill there to take down that camouflage. Jimbo's actually going to beat down Cristola. I'm not entirely sure if that was a ninja or if it was just a beat down, but Cristola was certainly behind him at the time, and all of a sudden, within just as many seconds, three members of Dinosaurs will drop. They're now going to be spawning over in the cafe. That's Cristola. Sniper Drone's going to be aggressive and push straight across top mid just to put a couple of shots off on them. Again, we see 57 spawning out in the open. Chalky will drop behind the pillar, just survive. Triple cap. What a reverse compared to what it was previous. Uh, this is the man who I really want to keep an eye on as well. Dare I say, I think this might be the best squad that Chalky and Ramirez have had. Just getting Jimbo and Snipe Drone as a, as a partnership is really amazing for these guys. They've got a real chance to shine. And this entire phase of control came from Buck20 and the Dinosaurs unable to be able to kill. Excuse me. Uh, it was Chalky. He got a kill on, on uh, one of the, excuse me, one of the Dinosaurs players and then was able to capture the nest as well. Buck20 here is going to challenge the man that we're talking about, but a great play out of Chalky. He get escaped with his life and managed to make a big impact on the play, and that's exactly why the Dinosaurs find themselves facing a deficit at this moment in time. Yeah, that is a deficit and all. They had the three cap for quite a long time. Full control now will change back into the hands of the Dinosaurs. Finally put a few points on the board, but certainly a decent lead and the pressure on Dinosaurs here as Book 57 will move down to bottom middle. Just check it. No one's actually there. Gives his teammates some support and puts a bullet over his shoulder, helps him out. He's going to shoot that hotel. No one's down there as we can see on the player outlines. Hoping somebody was. Ramirez coming off the spawn in the cafe. And that camouflage should be coming up anytime now. If they can kind of get in a position to grab it, you know it's always going to make an influence on the map. Ramirez is there waiting, but it's not quite come up yet. If he can survive, get away. He might be able to do something with it, but it looks like the dinosaurs are on the hunt and they will take down Ramirez. So camo is not going to make a difference in this current state of play. We're going to have to wait a couple more minutes to see if the next one's going to do anything. I like that. You just chase down a camo guy. What better weapon to have than just sticking a shotgun straight into him to seal the deal. 20 is going to drop from across the map. We'll jump aboard with Ramirez, who's going to go steamboating in. He's got the SMG in hand. Down goes one. Going toe to toe with Cristola. Cristola's got a cracking shot, but you know what? He's got his compadre there in the form of Chalky to give him that support that's needed. He will transfer Nest, and all of a sudden we're back in the hands of the triple cap, gents. And the most recent addition to the team, Ramirez, doing the dirty work, and it's exactly what X-Men needed. It's what they lacked when they had two Fox. They just lacked that kind of player who's, who's going to be doing the objective, going to just get stuck in and get behind the other team, but Ramirez is doing exactly that. They're, they've got a decent lead here. They just need to hold on to this bottom mid because Dinosaurs are pushing aggressively right now. Slight miscalculation on where the player was going to poke up. He did in the other way, into the, the right, and they actually play a run towards the left with the SMG. Cristola will survive, though. He's just going to get his shields back just about. The Splinter Nade will also disappear as he works his way, finds Chalky hiding up on S4, another splinter grenade comes in, he's going to stay there, blows up the barrels, Flames comes in hot with a double kill though, you saw the assist medal poking in there, three members though of X-Men going to be locked down back into that yard area, and this is kind of what they needed, he's on the edge, he's anchoring here, goes for the assassination, unfortunately doesn't get it, Sniper on there's with it, please don't, please, please, almost does it, Sniper drone completely caught off guard there by the AR of Cristola. Fantastic movement from him. Cristola is doing everything right now and I loved how he just waited to survive. Instead of pushing into that nest, he would have got caught out by Chalky. Chalky would have got the reset, so very important that he's using this survivability and showing very experienced play, actually. The least experienced player in his squad, but you wouldn't know it. He has been up there with his teammates all season. One of my favourite players in Pro League right now. Jimbo will take down Buck 20, I believe it was, which is quite an important... Ooh. Oh, Snipe, ooh, in fact, a bit of a 360 spin there from Cristola. Doesn't get away with his life. Snipe Drone will eat that one up and take full advantage. One player coming up from the Snipe side as he sees him poking up there just on the radar. Two go down. If he grabs Buck 20, that's going to be three. 
So right now we can see X-Men make something of this. There's Cristola going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, thrust to the left. Jimbo chases with the AR oh, in hand. No. But you know what, Cristola says, I'm sorry, Jimmy. If you're going to chase that one, you're going to pay for it, boy. And we've not seen the camouflage since it came back up, so I don't know if it was burnt once again. But at the moment, the camouflage really not making an impact. Both teams just kind of taking it out of the game, not giving the opportunity to the other team to make any sort of play with it. And that will play into the hands of X-Men, who have got this nice lead. They get two strongholds once again, so more points are going to be on the board. Buck 20 is going to get caught out top mid, and now Sniper is going to look towards that kind of nest area where a couple of Dinosaurs players are sitting. Yeah, but they're getting wiped out. As soon as they come up there, there's two more players. Cristola's there as well. He gets cleaned up easily. Storm Rifle is in the back pocket of Sniper John, so really, he didn't even have to go for that. He could have just wiped him out, but he still, he got the kill. Double kill in hand. That's kind of what you want. It doesn't matter how you kill them. Pushes on into Yard. We'll check for Shotgun in just a second. I do believe unless a player has it. He'll wait for the car. Out. Goes for the Yard first. Personally, I'm a big fan of going for that Shotgun, but he does have a teammate with him who's more than Wait. likely... Yeah, don't <laughs> you just didn't run get away. it. No, mate. There, you go. there we go. We'll travel back. <laughs> Thrust up to check yellow window. Nobody's there. As I say that, Flames appears. Assist medal in the back as Jimbo will clean him out. Really important they got Yard as well. Just get that triple cap. Put extra pressure. Bleed it even more and he will get also get the reset on the nest. So Snipe Drone just moving across the whole map, doing absolutely everything right now. And this is looking a very commanding uh, position going towards the end of this game. Yeah, Camouflage coming up in around the next 10 seconds, or it's supposed to be anyway. You said earlier, Dan, the Camouflage is pretty much becoming a non-point, a non-factor in this game. And total control now in the late stages of the game. We saw Dinosaurs pretty much pushing to try and make a play. We saw Buck 20 trying to take the nest, but unfortunately it seemed a little bit scrappy, a little bit desperate towards the end of that game there for the Dinosaurs. They will lose Pazza Strongholds 100 to 36. Commanding victory coming out of the Dinos. They want to kind of get revenge for the last time these two teams met up. How many times Ooh. do we say it? 57. A great performance from 57 and they win the game, but a poor one. And it seems like they come out the other end with a loss. On the other side, Chalky, great performance from him. 16 kills. That led X-Men to the victory. Just a great performance out of them. Great way to start this series. We said it last time. Chalky of old. This is now what we're seeing from Jake White back in the, you know, in the Master Chief collection in H2A. He was the GOAT. He was the God. The start of Halo 5, mm, struggled a little bit. Now, he's got this team. This still, regardless of what's happened, is a damn good team. And this is still one that has every single possibility of winning this event right here. 100%. I, I think this is probably my favorite lineup. I, I just think it's got a little bit of everything. And I love the addition of Ramirez. I've always credited him as a fantastic player. Okay, yes, not arguably the, he's not the greatest slayers, but he just does so much for his team, and he is a great captain, a great leader, and when you've got players like Snipe Drone, Jimbo, and Chalky to command, to just kind of destroy a map, then you're going to be looking in a good position. I really think they are going to be the team that is going to topple U4X, if anyone. It can be a little bit weird, can Ramirez, though, in, in the fact that when we, we say he's not got the raw slaying power, now and again, when the team goes down, or whenever what team is on him is like struggling a little bit, all of a sudden, he knows what job it's right. Okay, ignore everything else. We need to kill boys. And all of a sudden, Ramirez will just wake up and it's like, we thought he was the worst slayer, but he's actually oh. the, the biggest positive on I his mean, team. Don't get me wrong, we saw it at EMEA finals when when he pulls his finger out. Yeah. Like, he really pulls his finger out. He, is a fa he can be a fantastic player. It's just he's more known for his objective based skill. And I think, without question, I'll say it time and time again one of the best captains in European Halo history. Yeah, I agree. We saw there at the, the start of the replay, I think that camouflage out of Buck 20 allowed them to get 30 points on the board, but I don't think uh, Dinos actually were able to get another point on the board after after that series of play. I think they, didn't they lose the 136? Something like that. So you've got to say, once X-Men got a hold of the map, they, they never let it go. And you've got to say again, that camouflage being burnt by both teams, it played into the hands of X-Men and, and they took the map. I do like that the camouflage is top mid now. It just means that you've really got to work for it and it really rewards control on that map. So you're not kind of flanking around when you are on Plaza and just where the camo used to be, you used to be able to grab it uncontested and it was a chance to kind of get back into the map. But now yeah. it just really rewards that control. Which is kind of what happened at the start, you know. I've got to say, Dinos look kind of, for the first minute of the game, looked firmly in control. They had the slaying power. They got the first camo. They got the double off the start. They had the initial points, but you know, you poke the bear, you get the claws. At the end of the day, X-Men kind of woke up and there you have it. That was certainly a big scoreline. We'll bring you the series layout in just a second to show you how game number two is going to pan out and how this entire best of five will pan out. I'm, I'm going to be that guy here. I think if X-Men play like they did, 
57 carries on a little bit of a performance like that. I, I think that'll be a nice clean 3-0. Thank you very much. But the next game is Coliseum Slayer. And we saw yes. in the broadcast last week 57 went off on this game type. But also this was the series clincher. The when they played X-Men last, this was game 5. And they took it 50-45. to 45. So Coliseum Slayer, if 57 can play well like he did last week on our broadcast then you've got to say it's going to favour the Dinos. They are 2-1 and one on this game type. X-Men have only played it once, and they've lost the one game they've played. And I'll tell you what, if you did watch on the Bucks channel the, the VOD of this game at the end, I think one of the Bucks said, yeah, that's right, we're the best. <laughs> they want to make a statement. It means a lot to these guys. So I want to see them overturn this and take it to 1-1. One, one. Was this the one where Buck 20 was just like having a field there with the sniper? It's like, you know what? There's a couple of beds here. We'll take them. I think he said, Stick oh, them on the shelf. oh my god, I'm the best. Something like that Something in, like in, that. in his clip. Yeah. And and you know what? Bug20 is... He, he can he, At times, he looks straight up like top five caliber. You just see some of the stuff that he pulls off, his positioning. But again, it's whether it, it's a team... You, you, go, you know, you go into a match as a team, you come out as a team. It's a team effort at the end of the day. And I'll, I'll say this, and I say this every single time. Halo 5 is 50% game time. 50% teamwork. You need to really, really put... What you put into it is what you get out of it. It really rewards practice Slayer. and grinding. And it's, that's why I'm worried about some of these open teams because they have been putting in a lot of work. So I'm in fear of some of these kind of relegation guys going up against those open lot. So here we go then. Slayer on Coliseum's game number two. Tweet the stream. Use the hashtag HCS. Can we see the dinosaurs turn this one around? Or will we see X-Men once again pull it out of the bag and give them the beating of a life? Jimbo being the anchor right now as we see Flames. He's going to miss that initial grenade. And Flames will drop down. He'll, he'll land on the ledge as well, which will give him a little bit of ele elevation so he can run away with the rockets. His teammate will advance back in the base. There's two players watching on their player outlines. They do have a two-kill lead. Now, 57 is going to get challenged here. No. Oh. Snipe drone doing snipe drone things as he normally does every single time. Just scoping in to watch Chalky's back. If he pulls, gets a bit of a call out. He'll be looking for some faces. At the start of the season, I would have been saying, like, leading up to this match, just keep the sniper out of snipe drone's ha uh, hands. But we've not seen him go off with it that much during Pro League. So now is his time to shine. We know what he can do. He's got a scat shot in his back pocket as well. And this is kind of perfect right now now for X-Men. And this is the addition of Ramirez. He knows to get his superstars firing. He says, you know what? Let's get a power weapon in the hands of our of our team. Snipe Drone in the past has been a fantastic sniper, but also with Rockets. He just seems to be a power player. Every single time I've switched to his point of view in the past, at past tournaments in his Epsilon Prime, he always had a power weapon under his control. I think Ramirez has actually recognized that, and that's why Snipe Drone at the moment has been prioritized to take the sniper. And I think that's what kind of makes Jim Bossy and Snipe Drone so damn dangerous, because both of them don't want to call them greedy players, but I'd rather the power weapons be on my team than the enemy's team. Not only with the power weapons, but Jimmy with his power-ups every single time. OS, camo, he is on the dot, on the second, setting up every single time after time. Snipe Drone's got a sniper. The bigger issue for, I think you have to look at it as a grand scheme of things that we have now for dinosaurs. Won the pin back into the base, but... How do you get to Snipe Drone? You've got to get through a wall of X-Men players, but then if you get close to him, you've got a scatter shot. And you're just not going to feel safe pushing anywhere right now. No. Like, anywhere you run, you know Snipe Drone is going to be looking. You've got to really be thinking about where he's going to be positioning himself and where he's going to be situating himself with that sniper rifle. It's really interesting. We saw there on the player outlines, the dinosaurs actually spawned in the same base as Snipe Drone. I think they called out, hey, we've played with Snipe Drone before. He's going to be looking at this angle. Let's run over to the rocket side. Let's maybe try and get a little bit of rocket tower control. And that's why we're seeing at the moment, but 57 on top of the uh, the rocket tower, but it's Jimbo the man to shut him down. And if Snipe can hit this shot, which he can, it means Jimbo is going to be able to get out with the rockets. Oh, that would have been disgusting as Jam get Dan Gaskin just jumps out of his little seat there. That was uh, that was so so close, literally teetering on the edge. Snipe John again with another sniper kill, and all of a sudden we've got the rockets in their hands. This is turning into a massacre very very fast. Two bullets in the chamber, and this is the kind of player that could make these two bullets last. And honestly, he's probably just going to keep out of it, walk over them in 20 seconds, and they're going to give him another. Ooh, moving across to Jimbo. Nice little time as he bags himself a double kill as well. Snack could just pressure them even more. And the thing is, uh, the dinosaurs are just avoiding usual places of where they push on the map, giving map control to the X-Men, allowing players like Jimbo to be pushing around with the rockets. This is what I talked about. Snipe Drone's got the sniper, and now he's got nine bullets to play with, as well as the four in his clip. He has a scatter shot in his back pocket as well, so he's pretty much covered from all angles. As long as his team can keep him safe, keep calling out where the dinosaurs are, it's going to be so, so tough for dinosaurs to come back in this game. And look at this. This is textbook Snipe Drone. Don't overextend. 
We've got the lead. I don't think let he's died yet. Cut. No, he hasn't. Literally just let them come to us. Six and zero on the scoreboard. But, you know, credit where credit's due. The books are still getting kills. You see a couple of kills coming up on the feed now and again for the dinosaurs. But 22 to 15. That's a convincing lead. It is, and I love how Snipe oh. Dragon just ran away there as he picks up the snapshot onto Flames. Goodbye, Flames' head. He will pick up a fantastic shot on 57 as well. This man is doing some absolute work, but he just knows exactly where to be with this sniper. If you're watching at home and you want to know how to use a sniper rifle on this map, this is the man that you want to be looking at. And, and here comes the overextension. So he now knows, okay, they're in my base. I'll tell you where they're not going to be. They're going to be over at red base. So I'm going to go move over here into the corner. I'll let them come to me once again. Harry, just do us a favor. Don't move off this POV. Oh, don't worry. I'm this not. is literally the snipe drone show. Two players in the base. We can see on the player outlines. He'll tag one up. He'll tag up another one looking for some uh, assist from his teammates. Going to throw in a splinter grenade. I, honestly, with how he's, he's targeting right now, it wouldn't have surprised me if he actually, look at that, another assist medal. But look how smart he was. He knew he fired off two shots. He knew there were two players on the rocket side of the map. So he rotated into the base, called out to his team, hey, there's a couple of guys weak here and there. And now he's just safe. Again, there's no one even close for the dinosaurs to even put pressure on Snipe Drone. This is not what you want to do when you're playing against this man. No one's even got close. I mean, the closest person that got to him was Flames, and he got his face taken off by a snapshot. They're really just trying to work out a way of trying to get to Snipe Drone. But now maybe this is the chance. They finally found a way to push through the base. But Snipe Drone has that scatter shot just to back him up against Buck 20. Buck 20 is trying to dance around, but Ramirez is there to support. And now Snipe Drone is just going to run away yet again to his teammates. But in sprinting, you obviously won't get your shields back. So he's going to pause for just a second. He is weak, but there's nobody there. Just, you can just, look on the player outlines. They're all locked back into a base. This beautiful. wingman medal as well. This rotation right now is absolutely dominant. Fantastic stuff. Tag him and bag him every single time. He'll move into a corner. Textbook. This is absolute textbook. Yeah, textbook and vintage snipe drone. This is the snipe drone of old. I'm not sure he's aware of the player that's actually at S1 right now. No, he's not. This could be the opportunity. No, oh, Jesus Snipe Drone gets caught Christ. off guard, but Why? no! Buck 20! He will get his face taken off. His twin brother comes to save the day, but they're 13 kills down and Snipe Drone's already embarrassed your whole team. I don't really know what to say at this point in time. I think Just is I think the dinos are done. I I, I doubt <laughs> How do you do it? Words. How do you do it? Seriously. Boop, 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 boop. Fair enough. If you, you know what I mean? I suppose snipe drone, snipe down. If you stick sniper in your name, you've got to be expected to live up to the standards of which both players do with amazing feats. Yeah, and just now X-Men are just going to run away with this. They can get aggressive. They can just trade one for one as long as they like. They only need eight more kills. The new sniper is coming up and... Look where it is! It's in Snipe Drone's hand, but he's not going to be so fortunate this time. He will get taken down, but just with just six kills needed, I don't really think there's an answer for the Dinosaur Squad. They couldn't find an answer for Snipe Drone, and I don't think they've got a way to overturn a 15-kill deficit. The, the, it'd be fair to say that the damage has been done, you know? It's, you look at that, the deficit, 31 to 45. Fair enough, anything can happen. Cristola have been super aggressive, though. A couple of grenades are using their splinters to the best advantage. He gets the assist medal coming in, so someone will clean that, but... He is asking to die at the end of the day when you go steamboating in like that. Now we're back with Buck 20. He's got the sniper rifle. Plenty of bullets in the chamber. So you can, you can bring this back. It's going to be a massive feat, but it's certainly doable. We've seen that one of the books, it was 57 last time it went off with a sniper rifle. We'll see if his twin brother can do it now, trade for trade. But only as we rack up that, only two more kills. One more it is. Jimbo's got the rockets. Let's see if he can seal the deal. Looking on the kill feeds now. 20's on his own. Grenades are coming in thick and fast between a rocket and a hard place. Down he goes, 50 to 34. That, my friends, is how you use a sniper rifle. I just have the biggest smile on my face right now. <laughs> I mean, it's the Snipe Drone of old. It, it was absolutely vintage. Four deaths from Snipe Drone. Yes, he only got 10 kills, but I'm pretty sure all of them were with the sniper. He's, he hit some absolutely magical shots. Chalky, top slayer in the game. 14 from him. 11 assists from, from Ramirez, as well as 13 kills. So just that great performance here out of the X-Men on the other side. 57, 6 kills, 13 deaths. Again, a really poor performance performance out of him. I um, mean, yeah, go on, sorry. How many times have I hyped up Snipe Drone or Speed before a game saying, look, they're amazing snipers, people at home watch this, and then they haven't performed? Yeah. The one time I don't say it, and Snipe Drone just goes absolutely off. That's yeah. the kind of plays I'm expecting to see at finals. But, but you know why it happened? It's because we were touching down at the start oh, of the series. Rub, rub the lucky Gaskin. Yep. The ga what rub the Gaskin. The Gaskin effect. For his energy. Can I just read the comment really quickly? Your shirt's rather nice. I'm a big big fan of that. I know I ain't got a jacket. Mine? Or? No, I'm a big fan of that oh, shirt. Mine? I just noticed it. It caught you in me. I'm completely off topic, but... Thanks, I think. I don't and you brought up attention to the fact that you don't have a jacket again. <sighs> 
you know, when... I almost said when you're a global icon, you don't need one, but that would be just two, two golden right, boy, G -Man. wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I won't be able to do that one. We'll bring the scores up in just a second, but incredible players. Um, I kind of want to just break that down a little bit more before we go any further. So, snipe drone with the sniper. We, we've said it we're saying it way too much now, to be honest with you. But the rotations, is that his team giving him that ability to move by doing what they do and him just running around? Yeah, and I, I think with two folks on the team, he, as in two Foxy, constantly wants to play aggressive. He, he's with a U4X team now, that's two Foxy again. He's with a U4X team now where they can play aggressive with the sniper, but that's not Snidro's play style. We saw in that game how good he is when he's given the time to rotate around the map, when he's given the information where the enemy is. He can make his own decision where to rotate the sniper to. And when it happens, he, he just goes absolutely huge. It almost felt like an oddball game from the likes of Halo 3. He was just running around with that sniper, just racking up kills. And we just saw him hit so many incredible shots. I mean, this man is an absolutely disgusting player. And I can just kind of see Harry now as we're watching these. He's just counting them up on his hands because he three. can't think. It's three so far. Three so, just so far. Three out of ten we got I'd, on the I'd like to see how many. I, the, I think the ones that he actually didn't get headshots on, his teammate cleaned him up every single time, which kind of falls back onto what you mentioned before. He didn't even need to hit the headshots. He was just hitting legs, he was hitting hands, he was hitting fingers, anything he could see. I think he only missed like three shots with that sniper rifle. Yep. Incredible stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. Just really quickly, guys, everything Halo Pro League. Make sure you check out proleague.com forward slash Halo. We've got all the VODs, we've got all the matchups, we've got all the scores. You want any piece of information about either the North American or European Pro League, that is your number one origin, and that is your number one place to go. As you can see on the bottom as well, catch the VODs. We do have a YouTube channel. We also have a Twitter and Facebook. Everything, everything, everything is at ESL Halo. You'll also caught on there for a second the open circuit, just to touch very, very briefly on the open circuit, guys. Now, to put a little bit of pressure on here, this is the most imperative, 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 I can't say it enough. If you want to be in open circuit finals, this is it. This is pretty much your final chance. So how this one happens, open circuit finals, you have eight teams on points. So the top eight, you get from the points. You get another eight teams that come in from this final Sunday legendary bracket. So if you want to crack at these two spots that are coming up, you know, if you want to take on two of the teams from both your pro leagues, this is the final opportunity you get to move into the fall season. No more, no less. And at the end of the day, if it weren't enough, there's $1,000 up for line. Every single week in both sections, we have $1,000. $750 for first place, $250 for second. It's not bad. It ain't. Especially when it's, you know, we, we counted up the meme team. We counted up the mayor racked up couple of grand now. Some serious Skrilla right there. Some what? Some serious Skrilla. I'm definitely not hip with the I'm kids. I'm not down skrilla. with that language. Is that just a, is that a... It's a wonder slink thing. A wonder slink? <laughs> Pens down. You've said slink. Triggered. <laughs> um, but they've been... The meme team have been finishing second the majority yeah. of the time and they're still racking up that much money. Uh, they've been getting that cash dollar. But the, we know the secret, I think, have been first most weeks, if not every week. I don't know if those French God squads, I'm not as up to date. I know I was up to date with it the first couple of weeks, but yeah, there's there are definitely some, some definitely teams in twice. that. Yeah. So it's definitely 1,500 off I the mean, bat. There's some teams there that have been earning some money and they are looking vicious. They are frothing at the mouths. They want this pro league spot. So these guys that are going to be in relegation just need to be careful and they need to be practicing. But once again, guys, please, 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 I can't urge you enough. You must, 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 must sign up. Top eight, you will get eight teams coming in from points. You will then get eight teams from the final legend. This is for both Europe and North America. Again, those final 16s are the ones that go to the Open Circuit Finals. And then from there, two will advance to relegation and they will get a crack at Pro League. I am, for both Europe and North America, that is, I'm really, really fired up and looking forward to seeing relegation. I think, I think, I really think in one of the areas, no matter where it is, we'll definitely see a new team. Well, we're now, like, this is a pretty high place for Halo. Like, we, we're at a good point for Halo right now. And to be on that, to be in that main stage and to be in the eyes of the public t to the world is just a nice thing to have. So there's a lot of pressure on the line when it comes to relegation. And they're going to be playing for a lot.
So, speaking of playing for a lot, we could possibly, possibly, possibly be seeing the extinction of the dinosaurs. Again, there's still a lot of things to work out as we kind of make our wars to what... Uh, the dinosaurs make are getting quite... They're getting extinct a lot these days. I feel like we need new, yeah. like... Do we need we need new pun for the, for the dinosaurs? Yeah. They are getting fossilised. Nice. There we go. da 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 Hey, fossilized. We'll, we'll roll with that one. But we'll bring up the series layout. We'll show you how we're going to be playing game number three in just a second throughout the best of five. Good and job. just really, really quickly, obviously, we, we kind of said this is a really good game for dinosaurs. What, game three? It kind of... <laughs> it's it a swing point for them. It, I mean, it, it happened the first time <laughs> around when they played the X-Men, so you've got to think, does lightning strike twice? I honestly think the lightning has been blown away because it... <sighs> There's a sniper. It's Coliseum. Uh, Dare I say, X drone. I mean, <laughs> all X Men have to do is exactly the same, but just have Ramirez run flags, right? That's what yeah. he's there for. That's what he's good at doing. I like, that's like the best northern kind of expression. You just got to do it same again, <laughs> but you've got to run flags. I I do I do really really like that. It's it's a it's, it's a, a very northern it's, northern it's thing. Very nice. X-Men have never vetoed this map. They've never vetoed Coliseum CTF, yeah. so they are confident. I know I keep going back to these vetoes, but I think it's a very important thing. Definitely who you're vetoing against, but if you have never vetoed a map, then clearly it's your favorite. Just really quickly, Dan, we've got a little bit of an issue in the background, so we're just going to run through some various stuff. Can you Have you got any more kind of expanded on those vetoes? Because we know we're starting to see a bit of a, a veto meta coming into play. If people will sit back and be like, Let's see what they do first. Is there, have you got any more information on that? I mean, they would tend to veto first a map that they don't really like, but they won't veto their kind of worst map. They will wait to see if the other team's going to get rid of that first. But you are seeing teams vetoing certain maps against specific teams. I know, I think everyone has been vetoing Plaza against U4X. So actually this week, U4X vetoed Plaza themselves. Because they were like, okay, so if everyone's just going to veto Plaza, we'll just get rid of it now. We'll just put another one of our good maps into the lineup. And if there's one thing that I have to say about U4X, they're quite... I mean, I don't know if you can kind of back me up on this one. They seem to be a little bit more unorthodox and a little bit more open to what they play than a few. It seems like you d we see quite a lot of their, their games been stasis. I yeah. think U4X are just so confident in themselves. They'll be like, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll play anything Stick you throw Stick it in at front, Elliot. Yeah. And, and especially when Brandon, respectful, is now doing the vetoes. He's like, yeah, mate, yeah. we'll play whatever, mate. <laughs> Well, that's a winner's mentality, though. When you're, when you're going to say, you know what, we're the best team on every single game time. We don't really care. When you have such a strong map pool like that and you're so confident in yourselves, it, it makes you really, really tough to beat. Which is, thinking about it now, what you said over Snakey, when he was on U4X, it were done again, done again for. We well, that it. was funny because he said, don't need we it. don't need a game four. And that was the time that they went to game four against Pulse. And Pulse took that. Yeah. They took game three. So, And, and then, then afterwards, Snakey left the team. So Awkward. Oh. Well, ah. why did I bring that one up? <laughs> anyway, here's your best of five layout, guys. X-Men taking game number one, 100 points, 236. They then claim victory in game number two, Coliseum Slayer, 50 to 34. Got it right this time, Harry. Don't, Good don't job. Let it wrong. Coliseum, capture the flag will be your game number three. Can we see the dinosaurs do what they've done before? And they have done it before. They've done the reverse sweep on this team. They've been in this exact same position on this map, I'm right in saying. This is the turning point. Possibly not the game type, but certainly the map. Anything can happen. Anything can happen in Halo, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? It's going to be a good one. Tweet the stream. Use the hashtag HCS. Drop us a follow at ESL Halo on Facebook, YouTube, and, of course, Twitter. Harry, like you've got some uh, wonderful information across your face. Yeah, last time around, this was game number four. Right. So this was the fourth game in the series. This next game, Coliseum Capture the Flag. The team's records on this game type, game number three, is going to be X-Men have won two and lost one. Dinos have won two and never lost Coliseum Ooh. Capture the Flag. The last time these two teams met, it was on this game type in game number four. Dinosaurs won two one. So it went the whole 12 minutes. <sighs> Yeah. Um, how many times have we seen <laughs> dinosaurs go 2-1 up and yeah. then get to that position? Do we attack or do we defend? And they've thrown away a few leads. They've held on to them. I really think they're going to need three flag captures to win this game, though. I don't think they'll be able to hold on to two flags against a team like X-Men, who ha now has Ramirez on board to do that objective work. One thing, and you just mentioned how many times we see that, I'll always remember that truth flag. 
Oh, it, it brings, that, it's like a nightmare. That, that hover ground pound that just kind of, you know what, we'll just wait for another second and wall on takes advantage once again. But you know what, guys, there's enough of that. Enough from us. Let's move into game number three. We are locked. We are loaded. We are live. Capture the flag on Coliseum. Will be your game number three. Can we see X-Men clean the 3-0? Or can we see the dinosaurs just grasp on for life and claim victory in game number three? I want to start this one off with Buck 57. The last two games in this series, Dinosaurs have lost, and 57 has played incredibly poorly. So let's see if he can turn up here in game number three exactly when Dinosaurs need it most. All right. Currently on board with his brother, Buck 20. will move across to 57 now, looking at those rockets, and they are pivotal on a game like Coliseum. Flames is going to go one on one. 57 will clean up. Did Flames go down? Unfortunately he did so. Those rockets are still going to be uncontested. Ramirez also dropping. Trade for trade at the moment. I think there's only one possibly two alive on each side. Dinosaur's going to spawn in that blue corner. Flames going toe to toe with Chalky. Giving him a good challenge but Jimbo will run in. He'll clean up the assist as well. So now we've got the corner open and here comes the aggressive push from X-Men. Yeah, I wonder where that sniper ended up as well. I don't know if Sniper managed to pick it up. No it doesn't look like he's yep, got it. He oh, no, yep he does. He has it in his Who back else? pocket. He says look I'm going to shove that in my backpack. I'll get a kill on Buck 20 and now let the games begin. So Buck 57 gets away with his life. He's going to extend out which is kind of what he wants to do. But look at this. Now this is textbook sniper John. We said about it last time. Ooh. Jesus. Oh, this is what he does. He's off again, <laughs> scoping in on the spawn, and they know he's there as well. One of them crouches down because he knew what was coming. He let his teammate go first. He lost his face, but just a real quick second before he did this, he backed off to the cave and he waited. He let his teammates advance. This teamwork of this team right now is absolutely on fire. Snipedown's going to tag him up, looking for a player to give that assist. You can see the splinter nades coming in thick and fast behind, and he gets Stuck. the kill. You know what? Why not? If you can't snipe them, stick them. Yeah, fantastic grenade just across the map. Picking up the killing spree as well. He's just going to look down to see this grass area. Going to try and pick up Cristola. Cristola will challenge him. Snipe Joe goes for the nose code, but it. most importantly, he's still alive. He's still going to do some work. And Buck57 has completely ignored the fact that he is down there. Now Snipe Joe will have the positioning to get behind this dinosaur squad and do some damage. Look at this patience, though. He's not putting any shots on 20 at all because he knows that he'll give away his position. So he's going to keep crouched down. Stay off the radar. Why we're going quiet, I will never know. But look at this. He's flanking behind all of them. Flames is going to try and jump in for the assault. He goes down. Now he knows where one player is going to be behind him. That's 57. Oh Hard scopes in. Word. There's the double kill. Snipe drone, you sneaky beaver. How on earth did dinosaurs let him live? Cristola had to say, Snipe drone is down bottom mid or bottom grass. We need to kill him. Otherwise, he's just going to punish us. And then exactly what he did. X-Men are now 1-0 up as they put the flag in. And now all they need to do is just wait for that next sniper rifle to come up and give it to Snipe drone yet again. Well, the, the crouch jump's no longer a thing to keep you off the radar. I mean, I can't understand that when he jumped up to 57, how did 57 not see him? He was stood, he was on his radar, he was flashing, he was even putting shots behind him. It's like, why has nobody called this man out? 57 going toe-to-toe -to -toe once again. Snipe Drone says, challenge me, boy. Challenge accepted. Out comes the a AR. Will he get away with it? No, he won't! Snipe Drone again on 57. This man is absolutely on fire. Yeah, Snipe Drone just coming to the rescue there as Chalky was looking a little bit wonky-tonk, but when you've got a teammate like Snipe Drone to just come out and save you, this man is on absolute fire. And he's going to be waiting for that next sniper rifle. He's just putting grenades into this cave area right now. And really, anywhere that the dinosaurs spawn, X-Men have it on lockdown. Five seconds until the sniper is up. Cristola will know that, but Snipe Drone is going to be on top of that. And there we go. There's your Christmas present. Killing spree and a new sniper rifle. And of course, just to note as well, 12 kills for him. Flag also. So they are currently 1-0 up before. I think it was about 2 minutes oh 30. They bagged themselves God. another one. And this man, they need to do something about him. Why they aren't kind of saying, get that sniper rifle now. Let's challenge him. Let's punish him. Let's put him down. 57 is going to grab himself a double kill, which is kind of what they needed. Sniper drone's going to tag one with the nose scope. Goes for the beatdown. Doesn't manage to land it. Then he doesn't chase. He says, you know what? There's one there. Oh, there's a nose scope for you. Just another one just for the jolly holidays. Now he's going to get tagged up from behind. In come Cristola. Doesn't. Finally, he will go down. Don't get that nose scope. As with a cost to Cristola, he needs to do some work and go big with this weapon. And I'm so surprised because obviously Buck 20 and Buck 57 were teaming with the Snipe Drone. They know exactly the damage that he can do on this map. And actually, I love how aggressive Snipe Drone has been with the Sniper. It shows how confident he is in his shot that he wasn't just sitting at back and picking off as Cristola does try and get the nose scope onto uh, Chalky. But he's not going to finish that kill. A teammate might be able to help him out, but like you said, Cristola now, now needs to do some work for his team if they're going to get back into this. They are only 1-0 down, so it is definitely still possible. Everybody likes to no scope in this game, I, I do notice, but I mean, that's finally he gets one, but still, it was 
Ooh, that would have been a nice cheeky one there if he could have landed that one off. But look, <laughs> he's, he's, hit, he's, he's fired four shots and so far he's killed one player and now he's just caused his teammate to die. Personally, a little bit more patience from him as he runs around the corner. He'll get hit by a barrage of grenades by three members running out. They catch him in the maze and down he goes. He could have done a lot more stuff with that. Yeah, that's the difference, though, between Chris Sawyer and Snipe Going. How long was Snipe Going alive with the sniper? I think he survived for two cycles of that sniper rifle. It was absolutely insane. And then Chris Dola had it, and he was alive for around 30 seconds, which is absolutely crazy. And a lot of the times, these players are just using the, the sniper as a shotgun, almost. They're, they get so aggressive with it, especially on CTF. And Snipe Drone is probably the best sniper in Europe right now. That's what I'm going to say. And if he is getting aggressive with it, then you can be sure that everyone else is going to kind of follow suit in that meta. But, once again, the pressure is applied as the flag is on the move. Here comes Team Captain Ramirez. He's going to move this one. A great objective play. We said it said time and time before. Somebody needs to help him out, though. There's two, three people running in. There's Chalky to hold back that corner, which, if Chalky wasn't there, then that could have been possibly game over. They've got a pull. They've got the sled. They've got the return. But the teamwork of this team right now is absolutely d -sco -stin. Double kill for Ramirez, and he's got 16 kills. He's up there with the big boys right now. We said he's not much of a slayer, but boy, is he showing us different. Important thing to note, one flag cap away from the finals are the <gasps> X-Men. As Ramirez waits perfectly for Flames to push up to that rocket area and just finishes him off with the scatter shot. Ramirez, please. What the hell was that? He decided to jump on the ledge, just let a player challenge him. Note as well that he was actually pre-grenading for the spawn because he knows where players are. At the moment, he's in such a power play position. He can just anchor this rocket side and slaughter them left, right and centre. Clearly, this is a, a, a kind of a scheme that they've hatched out for quite a while now. Anchor the rocket side, don't let them challenge, funnel them down across that sniper section, which honestly, it's working. Harry, let's take a quick look at Ramirez's kills again. They are feeding him right now. He's up there with 19, at the top of the board, he just hit the 20 bomb, here's 21, unfortunately it won't be, he'll actually be taken down by Buck 20. Yeah, shame that he missed that first scatter shot there, otherwise he would just been continuing, but uh, Snipe Drone's got the sniper yet again, head in hands for uh, Wonder Boy here, but unfortunately Snipe Drone is going to get shut down, but you know, if you've got Jimbo behind you with the rockets, then you're going to be in for a little treat, as he will pick up the double kill, that's how you use rockets, everyone. Looks around the corner for Flames for the triple, but Flames will respond with a no scope. I think it would be uh, fair to say, not like this .jpeg right now is absolutely real because the dinosaurs are in a hell, a hell of a lot of trouble. The slaying from X-Men is real. This is the X-Men of old. It's scary when we see these players going off. We know what they're capable of. Rocket will go in, Flames will answer back. Unfortunately, no kill is connected. Now it's on Flames to try and bag a few more, but he is no shields whatsoever and sprinting and thrusting is only going to seal the deal. The flag will go in. That, my friends, is game, set, and match. Three flag caps to zero. The clean sweep is real. And that means X-Men are going to the finals, and Dinosaurs are actually tied with Pulse now, so could find themselves in rele relegation after tomorrow. So congratulations to the X-Men. We will be seeing you at the grand finals. Did, did somebody mention Ramirez and Slime? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's about that for Ramirez turning up when it matters? I think uh, it's oh. actually all three caps as well for Ramirez there. So what a performance out of him. Sorry to sorry to correct you here, Dan, but it was actually uh, Vibe now. That, That's what uh, I meant. Sorry, yeah. Vibe, yeah. vibe are uh, now equal with Dinosaurs with that loss from the Dinos. And they looked thoroughly outclassed. Take nothing away from X-Men. What a fantastic performance. I mean, just look at the statistics here. Snipe Drone was alive for a lot of the game, just pulling off highlight reel snipes. Ramirez, top slays in the game, most caps as well. But that was an Absolutely just dreadful performance out of Dinosaurs. Definitely not the Dinosaurs that we saw in the first two weeks of the Pro League and it doesn't look great for them going into uh, going into the final day tomorrow. When Ramirez is doing better stats than Jimbo, I don't think it's the kind of, kind of world that I really want to live in, to be honest with you. I, uh, 20 kills, three flag caps, Ramirez, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's how you play it. We said before, the team captain, he does the dirty work. He gets the teams in order. He knows where they need to be. He does the objectives. He can trust his teammates, but we saw it at the end there. That's all he was doing. Pull it, go camp on Rocket side, slay them, and that kill where he jumped upon the ledge and just, even for a second, he jumped up and just stabilized just to let the grenade pass underneath him so it didn't kill him. It just flicked his shields off. It's little plays like that that kind of separate from the good, from the awesome. And I think, oh, go sorry, ahead, his, his team just allows him to yeah. do what he did there. I mean, I said he's not the greatest slayer, but that performance was just exceptional from Ramirez, and I hope this is 
kind of a new Ramirez that we're going to see. Yeah, and alongside Ramirez was Snipe Joiner, and I think one of my favourite kills of that game was, was when he was up on his three, and he thrust it out, stabilised, yeah. shot into the base, and then thrust it back. So he didn't lose any map control. He was out of the open, like, at the top of the middle of the map. This was Snipe Joiner at the start of the game. Just a fantastic way to line up that Snipe right there, and, and it was just a great performance from him all round. But the fact that he's able to, like, stabilise out in the middle of the top of the map, grab the new Sniper right here, as you see on the replay, but how he manages to, like, stabilise, I think it might have been even been right here. He actually jumps out, stabilizes, gets this shot right here, and then stays on S3 as well. That's absolutely miraculous. And then you're allowing someone like Jimmy to then just do things like this. I think Jim Bard Rockets possibly twice I saw him in the hands of, but as I mentioned before, I don't think sometimes, and you kind of mentioned it's good to always have it as a player who knows what they're doing with them, but I'd always preferred, okay, who gets them? So long as Rockets or Power Weapons are in the back, you know, in one of your team's hands, yeah. then who cares? And one thing to note about X-Men, I have to say, which we don't see, not all the time, but that uh, scatter shot at the bottom in both games was always off spawn. Yep. Always, always, always in somebody's hands. And there'll be t plenty of times, I know it's Arena, but plenty of times I've playing Arena. I'll go grab it because everyone just leaves it as a yeah. bit of a filthy weapon, just not really doing much. But that there proves it is why you should always have it in someone's hands. Yeah, and and it's because there's so many tight angles. I mean, think of how many mazes there are on Colosseum, like like the red maze, the blue maze, and then obviously you have the ledges above it, which are close quarters as well. When you're pushing into the enemy's cave and and rocket corners as well, like it's it's a huge power power weapon. And a lot of people, like you say, Sims, they just leave it and think, hey, you know what? It's a garbage weapon. I don't need that. Let, let me just use my pistol skill for the rest of the game. You scope in with that thing and it really tightens up and it can do damage and if not anything you mentioned over the mazes why not bounce it around a corner hit it off the wall bank it off there I've done it before it's pretty cool if not you get a couple of style points for it but you know what guys I believe we have a Skype interview ready so Ramirez can you hear us? I can yeah How are you doing Andy? Alright? Yeah mate I'm all good yourself? Yeah not bad thank you so Sheffield's finest then coming out hot we've obviously uh, we, we've always said before, the, the Ramirez of old starting to work its way back. You're now back with, with Chalky, just, just off the bat, straight up. It, does this make you a lot more happier knowing that you've got Jake behind you going into, you know, into the finals, so to speak? Yeah, of course. It's not even just Jake. It's like the entire team. I think I've been having a rough time, sort of team-wise, because I've just not been able to get the best out of my gameplay. But with these guys, and obviously like I said, Jake, it sort of feel like I just feel a lot more at home. And I think they're getting the best out of me. I'm getting the best out of them. And there's a lot more natural chemistry. I'm getting a lot more stuff done that I wouldn't have usually got done with Jake. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be on team, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you've kind of gone from being on Vibe and the possibility of getting relegated, and now you've secured your spot at finals. Looking the way it's going, you're probably going to be facing Infused first. Do you think you guys can beat them? Are you going to be confident in taking them down because of your LAN experience compared to their lack of it? Yeah, it's definitely a factor. I mean, we're not sat there relying on like history or anything like that. It's, it's all about the present, and it, right now Infused are a very good team, and if you think otherwise, you're wrong. But it's just a matter of turning up, like you said. We've got a lot more land experience than they have, a lot less wobbles. It'll just be a matter of getting the job done when we get there. There won't be a team to overlook there because they've earned what they've got and they're a very good team. Andy, before you joined the X-Men, they looked very, very underwhelming. What have you done to change the team's play style and, and how have you impacted and, and turned this team around? Because they look completely different now with you on board. I've just sort of done what I do, made, made the plays I do. I feel like, like I said, me and Jake have a lot of chemistry in, in terms of the plays we get done. Like I'll, I'll be able to know what he's doing in-game a lot more, like naturally. Like I'd, I'd sort of compare it to what the books have got, but not quite as, obviously, because we're not brothers. But it's, it's, it, yeah, there's, there's been moments where I've noticed plays that I wouldn't have done if I didn't have Jake on the team. So yeah, it definitely, it definitely makes a big difference. But uh, I, think, I, I think they just needed a breath of fresh air. I think this change actually worked out quite well for them. These guys definitely wouldn't have made the change if, you know, two Foxy hadn't have left, but it's one that sort of worked out nicely for them anyway, so... I mean, Fox is going to be at the event, I'll be at the event, it's... You know, I mean, it's just business as usual, really, in Halo. Uh, just kind of touching on that one, then, obviously, Fox is gone, and we know kind of how much Perry brings, and you know yourself, he is a powerhouse, he's an incredible player. Are you worried as as a team? Do and and we know we know what's happened before. We know the banter about all the online stuff with what happened with Dignitas and yada yada yada. We've seen we've we've heard it all before. Can do you really think that they can win this event, or do you still think that you guys, as you are, when you get to LAN, you are still claiming this? Because looking back at EMEAs, you know you guys weren't the best. They were the third place, second places, and then you stormed it. You take it down. Is this going to be the same scenario again? 
I mean, like, like I said, I get it. So it's, uh, we can bring up history as much as you want, but it's not about that. It's about what's happening now. Again, they're a good team, but it's it's it, the, the pressure's all on them in terms of performing. They've got a god squad. They've not dropped a game. They've not dropped a series. Whatever. I mean, they're they're obviously a very good team. If they if they don't if if not if we if we didn't give them any credit, didn't think they could win the event, we'd be nuts. But I, yeah, I feel like my team's definitely better. I feel like we can definitely beat them given the right day, which is obviously I think July twenty fourth. So we'll, we'll just stay on that day. It's a one-day event. It's going to be whoever wants it most, sort of similar to Battle of Europe, if you remember. Yeah. Spot on. Thank you very much, Andy. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, dude. We wish you the best of luck as we work our way to the grand finals. Yeah, thanks, man. See you See later. You later. Bye. The, the one thing that I always have to say about Ramirez is how... Fair enough, we've heard it, we spoke about it earlier on, the banter, the comments, the jokes but he recognises talent and when there's a good team and like, I like what he said about Infused if you didn't think they were good yep. you're stupid he's very modest as yeah. well he could have easily said yeah we're better on land look at our history look at how many events we've won but he said look we're not going to underestimate anyone and that's that shows a great player to be honest I just can't believe how well the trade-off has actually worked in, in favour of X-Men I mean now you've got Ramirez who is a captain and he takes the pressure off the other three shoulders but also he has three players around him that benefit his play style. We saw in that last game, he had all three caps, he was leading the game in kills. That's absolutely crazy, unheard of from Ramirez. So not only do his three teammates benefit him from being on that team, but he benefits from being on it as and well. And in like, theory, we're seeing a weaker U4X as well. It kind of has closed that gap, in theory. In theory. We have yeah. got that next game to see. We can see how U4X have developed over yeah. the past week. This will mm. be a really good matchup because hopefully, fingers crossed, Wallow doesn't spill a drink in his Xbox. <laughs> God damn it, Stuart Graham. Wow. What, a, what a day to break your Xbox the day before, probably. But I've, I've got to kind of, you know, when we look towards that, this is going to be a telltale one. Brandon said last week, respectful. You know, this is week one. We've got a bit of practice, boys. We've got a couple of things we need to fix, but the eyes on the prize for Brandon. He's got an event to win. He wants to go to America. He wants to go to Champs. He wants to do well. He wants to prove himself. We've says, without doubt, best player in Europe. I don't think he... And he's very, very meticulous. Don't think he'd make a stupid mistake if he didn't feel it was right. This kind of now will be the telltale game coming up next. We'll see U4X taking on Team Fuse. But just really quickly before we do, we do have a giveaway going on right now on social media. Make sure you visit esl.ggHCSEU5 for a chance to get geared up for the HCS Pro League by Jinx. T-shirts, jumpers, jackets, and of course those keychains there. Some incredible stuff from the people over at Jinx. Plenty of chances to win. Jump on board. Check it out. We'll also be announcing last week's winners later on across social media. Right now, though, guys, we are going to jump into a five-minute break. Please, please, please do not go anywhere because we have one hell of a game coming up for you in our last series of the night. We're back in five. Do not go anywhere. <laughs> 